session live zale good morning everyone and welcome it's our polite greetings towards param puja shikshan maharshi dr bapu ji saulke and samstha mata sushila devi saulke once again welcome to all today's webinar biodiversity and its conservation organized by iqac department of botany department of zoology ramkrishna paramhams mahavidyalay usmanabad i special welcome to today's resource person dr lote sir welcome sir welcome to iqac coordinator respected dr ab indalkar sir head and professor department of english dr mrs mahadik madam head and professor department of botany dr more sir head department of zoology i also welcome and thank to honorable respected principal dr deshmukh sir for kind permission and cooperation so now i request to dr mrs mahadik madam to express welcome address so i over to dr mahadik madam namaskar a very good morning on behalf of sri swami vekana shikshan sanstha kolapur and ramakrishna parmahus mahavidyalaya usmanabad i take pleasure of welcoming to our resource person dr rajendra laute sir and all participants biodiversity describes the richness and variety of life on our without biodiversity how we can survive it is not possible biodiversity holds ecological and economical significance it is must to know biodiversity for sustainable livelihood since earth is home uh, homeland of living organism all have equal right to coexist on the surface of earth with all benefits it should be prime responsibility and moral obligation of human being to preserve and conserve other organisms therefore the objective of webinar is to create awareness about biodiversity and its conservation thank you to one and all thank you madam now i uh, request to iqac coordinator dr ab indalkar sir to express the views about webinar so i over to dr ab indalkar sir madam uh, indalkar sir na disat nahi hello hello madam indalkar sir disat nahi manla जॉइन झाले नाही तो व्हेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एव्हरी वन ऍज अवर प्रिन्सिपल ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर जयशिंग राज देशमुख इज आउट ऑफ स्टेशन सो ऑन हिज बिहाफ अँड आय क्यू एस वेलकम टू डिग्नेटरीज resource person dr lauche from rajaram law college sir uh, we have with us uh, organizer professor and head department of botany dr mahadik madam dr more head department of zoology their colleagues so dr radha madam and dr kamle sir my colleagues dear participants a great visionary and educationist dr bapu ji salanki established ramkrishna paramahamsa mahavidyalaya usmanabad in the year 1959 let me tell you that ours is a management it is a unique management founded by the teacher run by the teachers 
and run for the holistic development of the students through academic, cultural, sports, and extensive activities. The motto of our educational institution is Nyan Vidnyan and Isu Sauskar Yasati Shikshan Prasad. It is the vision of Dr. Bapu Yasawati that the college become dynamic center of educational and cultural movement as a vehicle of social change. Emerge as a premier institute imparting knowledge and skills and inculcating human values at its core for the everlasting benefit of the global society. Under the leadership of Honorable Principal Abhay Kumarji Sawinke, Honorable Secretary Madam Principal Subhangi Gaudiji, Joint Secretary Administration, Honorable Principal Dr. Yuvraj Bhusri, Joint Secretary Finance, Honorable Dr. Shizwar Sir, Regional Head, Marathwada Region, Honorable Principal Dr. J. Shingali Deshmukh. The college has been striving hard to cater the needs of the students. Our watchword is excellence. Quality is our goal. Ours is the first college of Sri Swami Vivekan Shikshana Sanskar Kolapur and the first college in Usmanabha district, affiliated to Dr. Baba Sayan Barukhan Marathwada University. In short, I would like to highlight the strength of the college. Ramkrishna Paramahansa Mahavidyalaya is recognized as the quality college in Maratha region. Recently, we have got status, star college status by Department of Biotechnology. We have a rich infrastructure, structural facilities. We have also a common research center for the promotion of research. College with potential for excellence, status by UGC in second phase. We have university rankers in nine subjects. 72 students got UGC research grant for the projects. We have a good number of short-term and BHOP courses. Nine Chhatrapati Awards by Government of Maharashtra to our alumni. First, and second prizes in the university level Avishkar competition. We have Vivekanand Scientific Culture and Mahila Kush Kendra. Now, a few words about today's webinar. The topic of webinar is biodiversity and its conservation. I think it relates to every human being. Biodiversity is the most important feature of our planet, and even in today's critical context, indeed, it is significant. No one will deny its importance, and every human being on this planet should be made aware of it. As all of us know, that biodiversity is almost is the amount of life on Earth at all its levels from genes to ecosystems and can en encompass ecological and cultural processes that sustain life. So, biodiversity is very important to the well-being of our planet. Most cultures at all at some time have recognized the importance of conserving natural resources. Many still do, but many do not. We should note that all species, including humans, are adversely affected by the loss of species diversity. So, biodiversity provides the foundation for the ecosystem services, including nutrient cycling, climate regulation of the water cycle, and it is therefore intimately linked with human well being. In a nutshell, I would say, that without biodiversity, life would not sustain on this planet. So that is why the topic is very significant one. And I am sure today's research person, Dr. Laute sir, will highlight all the aspects uh, related to biodiversity and its conservation. At the same time, I would like to 
and Dr. Mahadik Madam, Dr. Boris sir, for choosing the right topic and invited the right person to, for this webinar. I wish grand success to the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I request to Dr. B.B. Mure, sir, for introducing our today's resource person, Dr. Lauti, sir. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. B.B. Mure. Respected Honorable Dr. Jaisin Rao Deshmukh, sir, our principal. Respected Dr. S.C. Mahadik, madam, organizer of the webinar. Dr. Indalkar, sir, IQSC coordinator of the college and all my dear colleagues. Today, I would like to introduce to you today's resource person, Dr. Lotte, sir. Dr. Lotte, sir, is the scholar in field of botany and he has 23 years of teaching experience. He has completed his MSc, MPhil and PhD with Shivaji University, Kolapo. He did his PhD on studies on the anthocerae, uh, sorry, and uh, hepatica anthocerae of Kolapo district. He is also guided many students for PhD research. He has published 40 research paper in national and international journal. He also completed minor research project funded by UGC. He has attended and guided as a resource person many conferences, workshop, and seminars. He has delivered number of guest lectures on various topics such as personality development, competitive examination, biodiversity conservation, etc. I feel proud to tell you that Sir has recently visited Moscow in Russia and he has been awarded Best NSS Program Officer Award by the University. Sir, I wholeheartedly welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before the uh, starting this presentation, uh, your participants uh, will have the opportunity to submit text questions regarding the presentation to today's resource person by typing your questions in your chat box. Otherwise, after completion of the lecture, you can ask question to resource person by email ID. Uh, in a short uh, time, uh, after uh, time, we will provide all of you the email ID in your chat box. Uh, so, so next, I will forward over to uh, today's resource person for taking the presentation, Dr. Laute, sir. Sir, mute sir. Okay, sir. Good morning, everybody. First of all, uh, I'm very much thankful to Principal Dr. Jess Deshmukh, sir. Then, Dr. A.B. Indalkar, sir, IQC coordinator, head and professor of English, Arthi College, Usmanabad, for uh, giving a brief information about the Sansta and the, the college. Then I am very much thankful to Dr. 
B.V. Morrison for uh, introducing me. So today we are going to discuss one of the important topic that is the biodiversity and its uh, conservation. Though this topic is very much uh, familiar to all of the biologists, uh, we have to revise again and again simply because uh, we must know the current issues uh, related with the uh, biodiversity conservation. Because this current information is uh, very much uh, necessary, particularly the uh, to gather information regarding the rare endangered and threatened species and also the endemic species, uh, so as to conserve them. So today we'll just uh, revise uh, this topic. Uh, to get the current uh, status and knowledge about the biodiversity and its conservation. So first of all, I'm going to recall the memories of our inspiration, founder of Sri Swami Vivekananda Shikshan Samstha, Kollapos, late Dr. Bapuji Sarunke, and Samstha Mata Sushila Devi Sarunke for devoting their life to establish uh, the Sri Swami Vivekananda Shikshan Samstha, Kollapur and uh, they are simply giving opportunity to all the uh, poor students from the all the rural areas by dissemination of education for knowledge science and culture culture so if you see the two pictures and b uh, definitely uh, you will see that first picture a it shows only a single uh, plant species in the field and that is of the uh, corn that is maize and the second picture B it shows uh, different types of the plants either herbs, shrubs and large trees and there is a great diversity. So amongst these two pictures uh, definitely the picture B is uh, looking better because it is showing the uh, diversity uh, regarding the different uh, plant species. So, what is biodiversity? What it means? So, diversity simply means variety. So, if you see the definition of uh, biodiversity, it is the variety and variability among living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are part. And this includes diversity within species, between species and of ecosystems. Now, if you see the planet Earth, now this Earth is uh, unique and uh, different from other planets having biodiversity, simply because the planet Earth is uh, having 71% of the uh, water and due to which uh, life is possible uh, on this planet Earth and it also is possible for giving uh, or showing the biodiversity. Now, if you see the definitions, now, biodiversity is richness in variety and variability of species of all living organisms in a given region that is habitat. So, this definition was given by Rosen in 1985. And according to IUCN in 1992, the biodiversity means the totality of genes, species, and ecosystems in a region. So, there are innumerable living organisms present on the earth. So some of them are uh, present deep into the oceans. Then some of them are present in glaciers. Some are uh, very microscopic and uh, we can't uh, see uh, with our uh, eyes. So we have to use the microscopes to observe such microbes, that is bacteria, viruses, uh, fungi, etc. Then there are some organisms which are too large. Then if you see the components of biodiversity, there are three components of biodiversity. The first one is the diversity of genes. 
uh, it is nothing but uh, genetic variation within species, both among geographically separated populations and among individuals uh, within single population. So if you see the photographs, uh, there are three samples uh, or pictures of the uh, dogs varieties, that is chihuahuas, beagles, and rottweilers. So these are, these all are uh, dogs, but they aren't uh, the same uh, because their genes are uh, different. So uh, you you will clearly see that there is uh, great diversity uh, among these uh, species. Uh, there is single species that is the dog. Same case with the other species also, including human beings. So this uh, diversity is simply uh, because of the genetic variations uh, within the species. So these are some pictures of the single species uh, genus that is the Barleria. So these are the different species of Barleria which are showing the uh, variation. So variety and vari uh, variability is present uh, in the different species of the Barleria. So there is great variation regarding their size, shape, form and uh, color. So simply because of the uh, genes which are present within them. Then these are some Kurkumas. Uh, which are present in the Western Ghats. Kurukuma means Halad, Halad Varadli, he is a very man side. So these are showing also uh, great variation regarding their size, form, and the colors. Then these are some uh, different colored beans, that is the variety of the beans. So they are also showing the uh, variety and variability and, uh, regarding their size, shape, form, and color. Now these are the different varieties of the uh, rice, maybe Ambemor, Basmati, Jiresal, Gansal. So they are the local varieties of rice. So these are showing uh, different characteristics. Then uh, Basmati, uh, you know that uh, its smell is uh, its peculiar character due to presence of some genes uh, within these species. Now these are uh, different varieties of uh, cows. So Kartiwad and Kilar. Uh, they are local varieties. So these are different uh, species of frogs. So in this way, this variation uh, is simply due to the uh, genes which are present within the species. So it is called as the uh, diversity of genes. Now second is the diversity of species. Now it includes a full range of species on Earth, including microbes, protozoans and uh, multicellular organisms like fungi, plants, animals. So if you see the pictures, uh, they are showing Malabar gliding frog, uh, Drosera, lizard, monkeys, then dragonflies and uh, mirror beauties. So all the, these species, they are, uh, all are different species. So this is called uh, the of the species. Then the third is the variety of ecosystems. Now, it includes all different ecosystems that exist on the planet Earth, like terrestrial ecosystem, that is forests, grasslands, deserts, etc., and aquatic ecosystem, that is rivers, ponds, lakes, oceans, etc. So it, it is a base of all diversity on Earth uh, because it provides shelter to all organisms and all uh, communities. So prairies, oceans, ponds, and tropical rainforests are all uh, ecosystems and each one is uh, different with its own set of species uh, living in it. So water is the most uh, essential factor or important factor on the planet Earth, which is responsible for diversity of the uh, ecosystems, the uh, diversity in the flora which is present uh, in that particular ecosystem. Now, if you see the uh, biomes of biodiversity, there are five biomes of biodiversity. The first one is aquatic regions. Now, the pools, ponds, rivers, bogs, estuaries, and oceans, uh, which are rich in aquatic biodiversity, both into the water and on the uh, banks. Now, second, uh, glaciers in polar regions. So, south and north polar, uh, both are uh, showing again uh, uh, snow. But uh, though there is a low, extremely low temperature, uh, very less plants and animals are also adapted uh, in this uh, ecosystem. Then third is deserts. They may be either hot or cold deserts. So here uh, only geopathic plants and animals are adapted to extremely hot 
or extremely cold uh, desert conditions. Then the fourth one is grasslands. Now these grasslands are uh, very rich in uh, biodiversity, which are showing rich flora and uh, fauna too. Then fifth is the forests. So particularly the tropical uh, forests, they are very much rich in the biodiversity. So this is the one of the photographs from the uh, South America that is Amazon. So it is showing uh, the very rich uh, biodiversity. Then there is great diversity in insects and fungi. Uh, and uh, there is uh, addition of uh, new species of the insects and fungi per year. Now, if you see the map, so it is the tropical forest at equator are uh, rich in uh, biodiversity. So the tropical zone, uh, which is present, uh, it shows the great uh, diversity. So if you see the magnitude of uh, biodiversity, so Erwin in 1982 suggests as many as 30 million species in total, with most undescribed species living tropical forests. Now between 1.7 and 1.8 million species are described so far. So it is fewer than 15% uh, of the actual number. Then about 61% of the known species are insects and only 4,650 species of mammals are known to bioscience. So large number of plant species, about uh, more than 270,000 species and uh, vertebrates are uh, known. Now, but the fact remains that basic knowledge of the organisms that make up most ecosystems, especially in the tropics, is inadequate. So, so still there are some regions in the tropical uh, regions uh, where the human being is not reached and uh, many species are uh, there uh, unexplored. Now, information about bacteria, viruses, protists, and archaea is only fragmentary. And for convenience, many assume that about 10 million species exist, though the final figure is likely to be 30 to 50 million. Now, we see the world scenario of the biodiversity, which was given in by Wilson in 1988. Uh, these are the different numbers of the uh, species. Uh, that is plants and animals. So in total, uh, there are about more than uh, 1 crore 43, uh, 5,662 species are present on the uh, planet Earth. Now if you see in the Indian scenario in India, the uh, number of species if you see, angiosperms are about more than 17,500. Teredophytes about uh, 8,100, lichens 200, algae uh, about 6,500, mammalia 390, reptilia 456, physis 2,546, other innumerable vertebrates 8,329, mollusk 5,070, gymnosmos 64, bryophytes 2,850, fungi 14,500, bacteria. 850, Evs 1,332, Amphibia 209, Protocorda 119, Arthropoda 68,389, and Protozoa 2,577. Now, if you see India as a mega biodiversity center, so India is one of the uh, actually now current. Uh, currently it is 17 mega diversity centers of the world. About 1,15,000 species of plants and animals have been described from India. Now India has about 10 biogeographical regions. So if you see the fauna of India, there are about uh, more than 75,000 animal species identified with 80% insects. Then if you see the flora of India, about more than 47,000 species of flowering and non floral plants representing about 12% of known world flora. So about 5,510 plant species are endemic. That is 2,532 to uh, belonging to Himalayas and uh, about 178 species are from peninsular India, which
which are endemic. So, if you see the fauna of the India, the mammals, they are present about 350 species in India, uh, which represents eighth rank in the world. Birds, about 1200 species. Again, uh, it represents eighth ranking uh, in the world. Reptiles species are about 453, uh, which stands uh, fifth rank and amphibians, about 182 species, which ranks uh, 50 species in the world. Now, to see the Wegener's uh, continental uh, drift theory, initially the continents which are present today, which are separated uh, 200 billion agors, uh, years, uh, it shows uh, uh, connected mass, it is called as Pangaea. And due to course of uh, evolution, they are uh, simply um, uh, separated from each other. And presently, uh, we have observed the different types of the continents. Uh, so these continents uh, are showing the different climatic conditions. So due to variation in the environment and the seasons, there is great uh, variety and variability uh, that is the biodiversity. So if you see the tigers, they are representing the Asia. So Asian countries, they are showing the presence of tigers. Mountain lion, which is which represents uh, American uh, continental uh, countries. Then zebra is common in Africa. Kangaroo represents Australia. Then humans as a part of biodiversity adapted to uh, different habitats. So for example, Eskimos in Tundras, they are living in extreme uh, cold climatic conditions. Pygmy bushmen are present in the thick forests of Africa. Arabians, they are present in the hot climatic conditions of the deserts. And the Chinese, uh, they are adapted to the aquatic uh, climatic conditions. So what is the importance of biodiversity? What do we get from the biodiversity? So first is the source of food and uh, improved varieties. So biodiversity is source of drugs and medicines, it is source of aesthetic and cultural benefits, and ecosystem services. So first, as a source of food, about 80,000 edible plants have been used at one time or another in human history, and only 150 have been cultivated on a large scale. Then 10 to 20 species provide 80 to 90 percent requirements of the world. Over half of human nutrition is provided by the three major carbohydrate crop, crops like rice, wheat, and maize. So these are the major uh, food sources. Then rural communities like tribals obtain their daily food from wild plants and animals and also used as source of fats, oils, and fibers, etc. Now, as a source of material for building improved varieties, the commercial and domesticated species are crossbreed with their wild traits. The genes of uh, wild species are used to confer new properties like disease and pest resistance or increased yield in new domesticated varieties. For example, rice, that is Oraida sativa, grown in Asian countries, is protected from four major diseases by genes from a wild Indian rice species, that is Oraida. Naira. Then as a source of drugs and medicines, so at one time, nearly all medicines were derived from bioresources. Now even today, 60 to 70 percent of modern medicines are uh, derived from natural products. So in India, almost 95 percent of the prescriptions are plants in traditional system of Ayurveda, Yunani, and Siddha. So if you see the total number of flowering plants, 17,500 plant species are used uh, for the traditional medicine system. So tribal medicines, they are uh, showing about 8,000 species are used for the tribal medicines, 5,000 species for cocoa uh, medicines. Then 900 species are used in Ayurveda, then 800 species in Siddha, 700 species in Yunani method, and 30 species in modern uh, system of the medicine. So the plants are the sources of drugs and medicines. So some common drugs like morphine, it is extracted from the lattice of fruits of power somniferum, which is used as analgesic. Quinine, it is obtained from bark of cinchona calisaya, which is the uh, 
main, which is mainly used against malaria. Then taxol, which is obtained from the taxus baccata and other species, Brevifolia, which is uh, used as anti-cancerous. Then erzerpine, which is obtained from the roots of Rolfia serpentina, which is useful to lower the blood pressure. Then the plumbagin, which is obtained from the roots of Plumbago gelanica, uh, which is used in abortion. And vaccin, which is obtained from the leaves of Adathona vesica, that is corfoil, uh, which is used in bronchitis, asthma, and malaria. So these are some sim uh, sample uh, cases, but there are about 900 plant species uh, which are useful in the Ayurveda system. So this is one of the uh, typical example of the plant Nothoporitis pneumonia, which is called as Narkia or Amrutha in Marathi. So its wood is sold at rate of rupees 1.50 to 2.5 per kg. And uh, from this woody material, Campothecin is extracted per kilogram of wood is worth about uh, rupees 18,000. So for example, we send 10 tons of wood to the Japan per year, then Campothecin extracted is worth of rupees 1,000 into 10 into 18,000 is equal to rupees 18 crores. So we are exporting the wood of uh, this Notopodidus pneumonia for the last 40 years. So it uh, calculated about 720 crores, that is 7,200 millions. So nowadays this uh, Nothoporitis pneumonia, uh, it, is, it becomes a rare and endangered and uh, nowadays uh, government authorities, uh, uh, they have concentrated on the conservation of this species. Just like this Nothoporitis, there are so many plants uh, which are used in Ayurveda and particularly the plants uh, uh, which are the source of the medicine particularly the uh, parts like roots, that is underground parts, if you use in the medicine, uh, such plants, they are becoming rare and endangered. So we have to conserve such type of the uh, medicinal plants uh, for the future generation. Then the biodiversity is also useful as aesthetics and cultural benefits, ecotourism, bird watching and wildlife observations, pet keeping, gardening, recreation and scientific research. Then use of plants and animals in rituals like uh, sacred blues and sacred plants like Tulsi, Asumam Sanctum, people, Ficus religiosa, word, Ficus bengalensis, bale, Agel marbellus, Jaswam, Hibiscus rosa, and these are the these are worshipped by the people. Now different animals are uh, symbolized as the Vahanas of Hindu god or goddesses like uh, Garuda, Lord Vishnu, Bull, Mahadeva, Mouse, Ganpati, Peacock by Saraswati, etc. Now, wild plants and animals are a source of beauty, wonder, joy, and recreational pleasures for many peoples. Now, if you see the ecosystem services to the biosphere, by the biodiversity, now purification of water, air, and recharge of groundwater, pollination of plants by insects and birds, absorption of carbon by plants and supply pure oxygen, natural Pest control, food, sorry, flood and erosion control and maintain soil fertility, absorption and detoxification of human and industrial wastes, absorption of pollutants, nutrient cycling, and if you see the value of ecosystem services ranges from 16 to 54 trillion dollars per year. Or should we be concerned about biodiversity? Yes, now what we know that the earth is losing species at an alarming rate. Now in current situation due to the overuse, due to the uh, increased population of the human beings, some scientists estimate that as many as three species per hour are going to extinct and 20 extinctions occur per year. Now when a species of plants and animals go extinct, many other species are affected. So, uh, Therefore, the earth is losing a species at an alarming rate. Now, yes, even single species of plant disappear. It may cause extinction of 10 to 20 animal species, which depends for food or shelter on such plants during their lifespan. Now, which are the threats to the biodiversity? Now, habitat destruction, pollution, 
species introductions, global climate change, and exploitation are the major threats to the biodiversity. Now, if you see the current scenario regarding the uh, extinction or RET species of the birds, mammals, and amphibians, the birds, if you see, 12% are threatened, the 9% are near threatened, and 79% are least concern. Then 25% mammals are threatened, then 7% uh, mammals are near threatened, and 68% mammals are least concern. And in case of amphibians, 41% are threatened, 8% are near threatened, and 51% are, are the least concern. Now, what are the beneficial effects of the strong biodiversity? Now, biodiversity is the wealth of a country. Good amount of regular rainfall is due to biodiversity. Groundwater level increases due to biodiversity. Then reduce loss of fertile soil and availability of the medicinal plants. Now, if you see the causal factors of loss of biodiversity, deforestation for timber and charcoal, then industrial growth like coffee state, then encroachments like temples, ashrams, bungalows, and slum areas, then uprooting of medicinal plants, global warming, floods, etc., then construction of dams, roads, rail tracks, then displacement of tribals and political pressure. Now, if you see the, some pictures, you will get uh, exact idea about the loss of biodiversity uh, due to different uh, factors. The first one is the deforestation. Initially, this rate was very slow because uh, there is no any machinery for cutting of the woods. But nowadays, within a day, we can uh, clear the forest uh, about five to 10 acres also. So this rate is very fast. And this deforestation is, uh, is very, uh, rate is very far, uh, high. Then urbanization. Now we are going to disturb the natural habitats of the plants and animals. So this is one of the example, famous examples in Maharashtra, that is Lavasa city. So which is constructed in the heart of the uh, West Bihars, uh, which is disturbing the natural flora and fauna. The tourism is also responsible for the disturbing biodiversity. This is the picture of uh, Kas uh, Plateau. So at the peak point, uh, many vehicles, uh, they are entering on that particular uh, plateau. Then loss of biodiversity due to habitat destructions. So there are different regions like uh, uh, we are constructing uh, roads and railway tracks into the uh, thick forest areas, which are responsible for the uh, habitat destructions and definitely the biodiversity. Then illegal poaching is also responsible for the uh, decrease in the number of the different types of the wild uh, animals. Now these are the pictures which are showing dead peacock, dead vulture, then dead cobra, then encroach of tourists which are disturbing the habitats of the uh, tigers. So we, the human beings, are responsible for the uh, destruction of the habitats of these uh, plants and animals. Now, encroachment is one of the reason for the decrease in the number of the uh, different types of the uh, biodiversity hotspots. So encroachment is also responsible for the reduction in the biodiversity. Then we are constructing different types of the dams then uh, express highways, which are also uh, responsible for the destruction of the habitats. Now, these are the beautiful scenario of the uh, caste plateaus, but uh, nowadays in uh, many regions, uh, there is destruction of plateau by bauxite mining. Now, if you see the threats to the biodiversity, global warming is the main reason then volcanic eruptions, the forest fires uh, recently in Amazon and in Australia, these forest fires are responsible for the uh, destruction of the habitats of the different uh, plants and animals. Then cyclones are also responsible for the destruction of the habitats, loss of biodiversity. And overgrazing is also responsible uh, for the destruction of the flora. 
then uh, air pollution then acid rain water pollution so all these are uh, responsible then the waste disposal disposal so all these are responsible for the destruction of the uh, habitats now what is the impact due to loss of biodiversity definitely the loss of biodiversity is responsible for the reduction in rainfall rise in temperature that is global warming huge loss of fertile soil depletion of medicinal plants habitats of animals birds and tribals get affected now if you see the extinction of species initially there was a natural extinction and this rate was very slow following uh, darwin's theory of natural selection that is struggle for existence and survival of the fittest but nowadays due to the anthropogenic pressure the mass or anthropogenic extinction is going on sometimes mass extinction like sudden disappearance due to catastrophes for example a dinosaurs they have extinct from this planet earth then anthropogenic extinction it is simply due to humans and the humans are the main causes initially medium rate but nowadays rate of extinction is very fast now we see the origin and evolution of different types of the uh, species on the planet earth so planet earth originated uh, 480 million years ago first living organisms originated before 350 million years ago and during the course of evolution uh, many species they get evolved but side by side many of them uh, get um, get fossilized also because many of the species they do not cope up with the changing environmental conditions and nowadays they are present in the form of fossils so if you see the human evolution there are different types of the uh, species of the monkeys like gibbons orangutans gorillas chimpanzees and chimpanzees if you see uh, they split from the human branch of the family about 4 to 6 million ago and uh, which are showing the 99% identical dna between human beings and chimpanzees and human species that is homo sapiens uh, it is all from the chimpanzees now if you see the age of earth if we divide it in 4 24 hours we are just uh, originated before one second on this planet earth so the human species uh, is very recent one as far as origin uh, its origin is concerned but nowadays this species is very dominant on the planet earth and uh, due to its poor population uh, many species they are going to be uh, becoming rare endangered and finally extinct so this is one of the example that is the dodo then american bison then passenger pigeon so these individuals of species are removed at a rate of faster than the population uh, can replace them so over consumption is uh, responsible for uh, extinction of many species then darwin's theory of natural selection states that uh, those species which are adapted with the changing environment are still alive but those not adapted they get extinct and present in the form of uh, fossils now two third area of earth is occupied by ocean having deep valleys and mountains though we have reached on the moon we are unknown about uh, biodiversity in deep oceans now if you see the rate of anthropogenic extinction out of estimated number from 5 million to 50 million only about 2 million species have so far been described world conservation monitoring center wcmc estimates that 533 species of animals mostly vertebrates and 384 species of plants mostly angiosperms have become extinct since 600 uh, ad more have gone extinct from the islands than from the main I mainlands or oceans and the current rate of extinction is uh, higher that is about 1000 to 10000 times which is higher than the background rate of extinction so this overpopulation that is of the uh, human being is responsible 
for the extinction of many species. So if you see the two pictures uh, due to the uh, superpower uh, human being uh, is showing at the top of the pyramid. So this is the wrong uh, situation, but uh, we have to reduce our population uh, very fast uh, so as to uh, where to live with the other species in the ecosystem uh, very friendly because each and every species is very uh, useful and valuable uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, we see the interesting observations about current rate of extinction of species from 10 high diversity localities in tropical forests, which cover about uh, 3 lakh square kilometers. Some 17,000 endemic plant species and 35,000 animal species are threatened and could be lost in near future. Then 14,000 to 40,000 species are being lost every year, that is 2 to 5 species per hour from tropical forests alone. And since 2000, 6 million hectare of primary forests have been lost each year. Now it is estimated that by the end of 21st century, if the current rate continues, the earth will lose up to the 50% of the species. Now if you see the keystone species, now within uh, biotic communities, the most crucial species is described as the keystone species. Now protection of keystone species is the priority in biodiversity conservation. And this is because if keystone species are lost from the habitat, many other species may be lost from the area. For example, if bats are lost from the habitats, the pollination of some plants get affected like mahogany and the mahogany plant will definitely get a uh, decrease in number. Now similarly, populations of insects increase rapidly. Now bats are seed dispersal agents and thus protection of bats is very much essential. Now similar to the case of the banana tree, now this banana tree, it harbors about 60 different types of the birds and insects. So we have to uh, think while cutting the trees like banana trees, uh, which harbors about 60 different birds and insects. Likewise, there are other species of the uh, trees also, uh, which are responsible uh, for giving shelter to the different types of the birds and insects also. Now among the others top Predators are keystone species. Now, predators also control herbivorous animals. For example, the areas where population of gray wolf has been drastically reduced because of hunting, then the deer population increased rapidly. So, overgrazing by deer leads to elimination of many endemic plants and insects who depend on these plants as their food. So, therefore, Conservation of biodiversity is very much essential and uh, due to enormous value of biodiversity, there is need to conserve uh, biodiversity. A number of programs now being implemented for conservation and sustainable utilization of biodiversity. In situ conservation is achieved by protection of wild flora and fauna in nature, that is in natural habitats itself, like in case of wildlife sanctuaries, then uh, national parks, etc. In India, there are about 16 biosphere reserves, 89 national parks, and 490 sanctuaries, which covers 5% of geographical area of nation. Now, if you see the Western Ghats in India, it is one of the uh, hotspots in India, which is chain of mountains of uh, 600 kilometers. The river Tapi in north to Kanyakumari in south. Uh, including Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala. So it is one of the important biogeographical region or points of India, which maintains hydrological cycle uh, in uh, all these states that is in southern India. Then biodiversity, if you see, there are about 12,000 species uh, are present in Western Ghats. So it is mega diversity area which occupies 5% of total uh, India's total area. It possesses 26 to 27% of flowering species of India, and it shows high endemism, that is total and response 5,150, uh, out of which about 1,700 species are endemic to Western Ghats. So during, uh, was scientist uh, 1986 to 2006, uh, discovery of more than 300 new species uh, have been carried out. Now, this is the picture of Western Ghat. 
so in maharashtra there are different types of the uh, biodiversity conservation hotspots so tansa sanjay gandhi kalsobai harishankar fansar karnala bhima shankar mayureshwar koina chandoli radhanagar malwan and in goa bondla molem and kotegaon so these are some pictures of the uh, wildlife sanctuaries radhanagar wildlife sanctuary famous for uh, bison and a number of plants then koina wildlife sanctuary then chandoli uh, national park which harbors many uh, plants and animal species now these are some pictures which are showing uh, different plants uh, which are present in the western ghats so there is nothing lovelier than uh, the flowers on the planet so this is the diversity in case of asclepias so there are different uh, species of caroloma then poya then we see the diversity of anonesi michelia anona then milusia nugain oaria orphea and arthropod species then this is the diversity of uticularias which are particularly on the plateaus of western ghats then there are many medicinal plants which are present in the uh, western ghats there is great diversity uh, in the open uh, fields and also on the plateaus of uh, western ghats now uh, these are some aquatic uh, rare endangered citrus species that is aponogeton aponogeton species like hybrid brugini latans satarensis crispus etc now these are some camphorae and pifigenia species which are present in western ghats there are number of species of orchids in the western ghats like aerides habenaria pectilis habenia species and cotonia pentacularis then there are these are some arisima species amorphophyllous species again amorphophyllous species these are some curcumas from western ghats these are some uh, seropigia species which are present in the northern western ghats maharashtra now currently the government of maharashtra uh, proposed conservation reserve in uh, western ghats so these are the eight regions in the western ghats which are newly proposed as conservation reserves uh, the first one is chandagar the second one is the dorm amboli third one is chatrapati pati shahu maharaj agra bhujargan conservation reserve fourth is gajambawna fifth is panagar sixth is vishagar seventh is zorjambadi and eighth is maimikla conservation reserve so this is the map which is showing these uh, all uh, newly uh, proposed conservation reserves so here at the base dorda mark then chandgar then chatrapati shahumara adra bodargad conservation reserve so this region is close to goa and karnataka particularly the tilare region which is connecting uh, the karnataka uh, then the gaganbawa conservation reserve and panagar conservation region which is joining radhanagri wildlife sanctuary and sayadri tiger reserve so gaganbawa panagara panagar and vishalagar conservation reserves Uh, which are proposed to connect both the radhanagri and the sayadri tiger reserve then the zor zambri uh, conservation reserve and mini cluster bird conservation reserve so these are the eight newly proposed conservation reserve reserves so there are two uh, conservation reserves in the vidarbha region so this is the picture of tilari uh, conservation uh, reserve so in the state of maharashtra there are seven conservation reserves including six earlier newly declared as tilari the historic decision to recognize uh, 10 new conservation reserves has now been taken uh, at the 16th meeting of the state wildlife uh, boards now in vidarbha mahendri and munia are the two areas uh, which are uh, proposed as conservation reserves now with the recent declaration of such an area in the state of karnataka the entire area of 1579 square kilometer known as protected area known as necklace has been protected and the total area has increased from 3.8 to 5.2% the chandgarh conservation reserve connects the tilari reserve to the bhimgarh sanctuary in karnataka 
Then rare grass species like Hubaradia uh, diandra are found in uh, Tilari Ghat. Then Dodamar Amboli Conservation Reserve connects Tilari and Chandigarh Conservation Reserve with Azra Bhadarwar Conservation Reserve. Now this area has the highest biodiversity and most reached uh, research area in the entire uh, Western Ghats. Now new species of Amboli tiger taught they told there are many earthworms like Devgandu in Marathi, they frogs, then copper scales, crabs, uh, they are uh, thrive uh, in this region. Then Chhatrapati Shahu Maharaj's Adra connects Bhudaragad Conservation Reserve with Radhanagari Sanctuary Amboli Conservation Reserve. Now the mysterious black panther has appeared in this area many times and this area is very important for the southern extension of Radhanagari and as a buffer zone. Then Argeria Lavi, uh, species which is considered as extinct, but which is rediscovered in this area. Then the Gaganbawada Conservation Reserve connects Radhanagri with the Panada Fort Conservation Reserve. And this reserve is home to bears and a huge plant diversity. Panadagar Conservation Reserve connects Gaganbawada area with Vishalgar Conservation Reserve. And this part is rich with many birds like heavenly dancers, eucalyptus pigeons, etc. Then Vishagar Conservation Reserve is the link to Chandoli National Park, while the strong purple connects uh, the Mahabaleshwar area of Satara district with Koina. Now rare beasts like leopard cat, a jungle cat are found in, in this area. In short, in the endless ocean of human and development vehicles, these conservation reserves are uh, expected to act as an island and support wildlife. The heavily fragmented northwestern ghats are expected to play an important role in securing and connecting uh, mammal routes. The incident of a tiger going to Kali Sanctuary after traveling about 300 km from Sayaj Tiger Sanctuary is a fresh example. Now the decision will make such routes safer. Also a committee will be formed soon to start eco-friendly tourism in this area to provide employment to the local peoples. Trains will soon be set up where wildlife will not be disturbed and tourism can take place. Now, these conservation resorts provide a good market for local hotels, homestays, guides, markets, and concrete products, legumes, etc. And it will definitely help reduce the dependence of the locals on the forest. The mining red category industries will not be able to spread their arms and legs in these protected areas. However, industries like animal husbandry and dairy will not be affected much, and it is decision. Uh, that is essential for the survival of the Sayadri as a whole and its benefits will gradually reach the masses and it is hoped that the conservation reserve will take the next step towards the becoming a sanctuary to conserve the flora and fauna. So, if you see the value of the or importance of the Sayadri, the Sayadri is very much important for the conservation of flora and fauna naturally. So, there are about uh, 60 species genera, they are endemic. There are about 2,000 species, that is 30% species are endemic to the Western Ghats. Out of that, monotypic, uh, 49 genera are there. And in Agastha Malay, there are about 200 species, uh, which is showing high endemism. So, if you see the endemic tree genera in the Western Ghats, uh, Blepharistema, Irinocarpus, then Metromitus, Potinophilium, Poeclunus, Two species and Sudoglacidium, uh, these are endemic to the Western Ghats. Now we see the endemism of the flora of Maharashtra state. So there are 215 species, that is taxa, belonging to 110 genera and 36 families, out of which 90 taxa belongs to monopods from the 44 genera and 11 families, and 117 taxa uh, of the dicots belonging to 65 genera and the 25 family, families. Now, this is the picture of the largest of Meridia, which is the uh, state flower of the Maharashtra. So, according to Gaikwar, uh, there are about 159 flowering plants, taxa belonging to 81 genera and 31 families found to be strictly endemic to the Sayadri ranges. Out of that, the genus Syropegia has the largest number, that is, about 17 uh, species of the uh, endemic uh, species are present in Western Ghats. Then five monotype genera are restricted to the Sayadri ranges, and most of these endemic taxa are restricted to small biogeopod regions and are rare in occurrence. Then field assessment has shown that 34 endemic taxa fall into IUCN category, that is critically endangered, 18 into endangered, and 20 into 
vulnerable and one near hidden. If you see the uh, some uh, images of the endemic plants in uh, from the Maharashtra, that is Western Ghats of Maharashtra. So we'll see uh, some of the images. The first one is the clematis, <laughs> then Unona homalium, then Sageria, Pictosorium, uh, Pictosporum garcinia, then Mamia, then Irulina. Then Sterculia, then Irinocarpus, Grivia, then uh, Impatience species, then Agel Marmelus, then species of Sterculia, then Irinocarpus, Grivia, then Garcinia, Mamia, Iriolinia. So there are a number of plants uh, which are endemic to Maharashtra. So just I am uh, speaking very fast uh, due to time limit. You just watch all these images. Moringa, Bahonia, Albizia species, Sizium species. Then Syropegia. Transpora, Barleria, Carvia, Calosa, Leopolis, Ricci, Cecilis, Utricularia, Nike, Albuquerulia, then Janardanini, Baboy, then Dend of the Falpeta and Viscum Capitulum, Marcosolin, Heterophragma. Dolicondra species, Stereospermo species, Myristica, Anima, also Daphne, Apresua, Pleodion, Blachia, Piper species, Euphorbia species, Aperusa, Acampe, Exorchids, Ephigenia, Chlorophyll, Arisima, Arisima, Cryptoporin, Companies is very small uh, plant. Three colon colloquins in the grass, tribovangi, cookie. So these are some images of the endemic plants of the Maharashtra. Now, what is the role? Uh, if you see, as we are experts, that is, all the biologists, either botanist or zoologist or microbiologist. So our role is very much important for the conservation of biodiversity. Now, organization of countless initiatives to disseminate information. Then we have to promotion of the protection of biodiversity to encourage organizations, institutions, companies, and individuals to take direct action to reduce the constant loss of biological diversity worldwide. And it has become necessary to assess the status of endemic plants in light of the revised IUCN criteria and the categories. And, uh, we, the knowledgeable peoples, uh, only can do the assessment of uh, such status of endemic plants in light of the revised IUC criteria and categories, and uh, we can conserve them uh, in schools, colleges, and uh, reserve uh, areas like reserve forests. So, see the environment and biodiversity. Uh, first, we have to raise awareness about the importance of environment and biodiversity. Then accomplishments to save environment and biodiversity that have been realized by communities and governments. Promote innovative solutions to reduce the threats to environment and biodiversity. Then encourage individuals, organizations, and governments to take immediate steps to halt environment and biodiversity loss and start where to start dialogue between stakeholders for the steps to be taken in the future. So these are three main messages regarding the uh, conservation of biodiversity, that is, biodiversity is important for human well-being. The current rate of biodiversity loss is uh, severe, and by some uh, accounts up to 100 times the natural rate of extinction. And we need to, together, uh, need to work together to halt this loss, and many such stories uh, point the way to the future. Now, we have to develop strategy, uh, create strategy. 
ready to provide a global message and work with the partners to multiply and transmit the message. Create information products that highlight success to them the work of the convention and uh, take advantage of existing international and national events of highlight the biodiversity agenda to new audiences. Our future target must be a significant reduce, reduction of the current rate of biodiversity loss at the global, regional and national level as a contribution to the poverty elevation and to the benefits of all life on earth. So we have to uh, give information through the information products like global biodiversity outlook, biodiversity conservation message, biodiversity conservation website, then fact sheets, brochure and posters, promotional videos, video news release, educational and branding kits. Uh, so we have to produce them uh, to publish uh, the data, current data regarding the biodiversity. Then we have to create national committees to conserve biodiversity, like national government will be primary organizers for the biodiversity conservation. Then constitution of national committees of variety of stakeholders, including but not limited to the representatives from ministers, municipalities, business and key economic sectors, educators, indigenous and local communities, NGOs, scientific groups, national clearinghouse mechanisms, the media and the youth groups. So what is the role of non-conventional, uh, sorry, non-governmental organizations in biodiversity conservation? So adapt and adopt biodiversity conservation messages and then transmit them to your networks. Highlight and promote your own biodiversity conservation success stories. Provide support and resources to national events including the International Day for Biodiversity that is 22nd May 2009. Then World Environment Day and other events. Build links between biodiversity and other items on the environment and development agents, agendas. Then organize events as key international meetings and coordinate to become involved in the CBD process. Now, what is the role of citizens into biodiversity conservation? So learn, act and speak. So you have to learn about biodiversity in your city, region and country. Then learn how your consumption patterns impact on biodiversity. Then you have to act to make responsible consumption choices to support activities and organizations that conserve biodiversity. And you have to speak about to make your views known to government and the private sector. So according to Ishob Nishad, this universe is the creation of the supreme power meant for the benefits of all his creation. Individual species must therefore learn to enjoy its benefits by forming a part of the system in close relation with other species. Let not any one species encroach upon the other's rights. So, in brief, I'm going to discuss the success story of the uh, Raji Ram Rao Mahadeli Zat campus in conservation of water and biodiversity. So, we have limited water supply from the municipality of Zat, and uh, during the year 13 and 14 and 14 15, uh, there is severe drought and there is decreased uh, water table, groundwater table. So, we decided to construct a population tank to collect the rainwater from the uh, catchment area of the college campus through the NSS camp during 2016 and 17 and 17 18. And now we are such reliant for water. So, also we have started plantation programs in the large scale from the 2014. So, through NSS, that is regular as well as uh, camp uh, activities, uh, we have done much of the plantation uh, in our campus. So, if you see the pictures, you will see the barren area. So this total barren area it is now, it is uh, well planted. So this was in 2014, uh, we have started the plantation program. Then uh, we have constructed one check dam to collect the water and below you, uh, you see the picture uh, with full of water. So this uh, water percolation tank is constructed during the special camp uh, during 16, 17, 17, 18. So these are some pictures which are showing construction of dam and plantation. Then we have uh, provided uh, drip irrigation 
to each and every plant which is planted in the campus. So we have planted more than 500 plants uh, initially. Then per year we have uh, planted 500 plants. Then we have supplied drip uh, irrigation to each and every plant. Uh, now this is the initial uh, step regarding the construction of the percolation tank. Honorable uh, late principal S. Rahman Gregor sir has uh, taken initiative uh, for this. Now this is the construction of check dam by the MSS volunteers. Now this is the fruit of the first, that is the water tank full of water. So we have organized uh, plantation programs, group shipping, the, then plantation programs. Each year we have planted uh, more than 500 plants. And we see the current scenario. So these are the plants which are planted during 2017, 18, and 18, 19. So we also contributed in the Mandi Foundation program. And we have got second prize by the NSS department of Shivaji University Kolapur. We are felicitated by the Shivaji University Kolapur. So lastly, just remember that when the last tree is cut and when the last tree is dry, when the last fish is caught, then we realize that money, gold just can't be eaten. So health is wealth and than any other wealth. So man will always prepare medicine which is mainly come from plants. So plants are very much uh, important for or as a medicinal uh, properties. So without oxygen, we can't imagine life. So again, we have to plant more and more trees so as to provide natural uh, oxygen. So uh, we get idea about the, or the, value, about the value of the oxygen when uh, we admit in the hospital. So, so all of you can do different together, we can do so much. Save biodiversity, save planet Earth. So lastly, I want to quote the dialogue from the first uh, dialogue picture, of a film with dialogue that is the great dictator of Charlie Chaplin. So according to him, uh, greed has poisoned men's souls has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-staked us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity more than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youths a future and old age a security. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress which will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite. We must have to give priority to develop seedlings and tree plantation. So anyone can contact with Lead Botanical Garden of Shivaji University, Kolapur, uh, which will provide saplings to the various kinds of gardens, uh, to the gardens in India. So these are different plants which are uh, supplied by the Deed Botanical Garden of Shiva University of We have to contact them and we have to conserve uh, the rare, endangered, threatened and endemic species, at least from the uh, Western Ghats of Maharashtra. So Mahatma Gandhi has rightly quoted that, be the change we want to see in others. So we have to start from ourselves to uh, 
conserve the biodiversity that is around or not. So, as we, the biologists, that is botanists, zoologists, and microbiologists know about the plant, animal, and microbial diversity, their methods of reproduction. We know we can determine the status of species either uh, rare, engendered, threatened, or endemic. Then we can know the growth requirements. We know how we can decide conservation priority. Then ecology of species, then methods of propagation. We know idea of climate change. And therefore, we will give advice in conservation for rare, endangered, threatened, and endemic species, which play a role, important role uh, in the sustainable development. So therefore, we, the biologists, uh, are the only experts who know the RET concept that is rare, endangered, and threatened species and uh, their conservation. So therefore, uh, we know what to conserve, why to conserve, when to conserve, and where to conserve. So lastly, uh, I'm very much thankful to all the audience uh, for your patience. Thank you. Special thanks to organizers, Dr. J.S. Deshmukh, sir, Principal uh, Ramkrishna Paramahans Mahavir Usmanwar, Professor Dr. Ebindal Kassar, IQC coordinator, Professor Dr. Mrs. S.C. Mahadik, Madam, uh, Head Department of Botany, Dr. V. Moore, sir, Head Department of Zoology, Dr. S.V. Jadav, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Dr. H.C. Kamre, Assistant Professor in Botany, all the staff of the RP College, teaching and non-teaching. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, now this topic is open for discussion. Dear participants, uh, if you have to ask a question, I put a, a email ID of this person, Dr. Laute, sir. You directly ask them by email. Otherwise, you have to type questions regarding the presentation in your chat box. Kunala kai question as still tar tumi vicharo shakta hai, chat box mere type karo shakta hai ki mua to email id di lela hai. लौटे सरांचा तब मेल लाग पर तो मी कोशन भी चारू शक्ता है कुना लगाई विचार है चाहे काई कोशन आहे का कुना चाहे Okay, uh, question yet no questions on chat box. Uh, so before that, uh, uh, all participants kindly note that uh, once you leave today's webinar, you will uh, receive a feedback form into your email, feedback form link into your email, and you have to complete and uh, submit. Then after seven to two, eight days, you will receive the webinar certificate to your to your email ID. So now uh, I request to Dr. Kambay sir to express a vote of thanks. Sir, mute at mute at, sir. Sir, mute at to me. Yes, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Harish Kamle, and I am here 
to present the vote of thanks for today's webinar. I would like to thank our resource person and webinar speaker, Dr. Rajendra Lote, for attending and enlightening us with their knowledge and interesting things. It gave deep insight into the topic and also revealed some interesting facts. The point where Dr. Rajendra Lauteji told us about the diversity of plants and animals and number of species occur in India and importance of biodiversity, loss of biodiversity, need of conservation of biodiversity was really informative. I am pretty sure the precious knowledge that Dr. Rajendra Lauteji gave us will definitely help us in our studies and future. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Rajendra Lauteji for taking out time from their busy schedule and enlightening us with the knowledge. Thank you so much, sir. I would like, I would also like to thank our principal, Dr. J.S. Deshmukh, sir, for giving permission to organize this webinar session and inviting Dr. Rajendra Lauteji to conduct it. I want to thank Dr. A.B. Indalkar, sir, IPSC coordinator of the college, head of the department of botany, Dr. S.C. Madik Nadam, head of the department of zoology, Dr. D.V. More, sir, and Dr. S.D. Jadav, madam, for organizing a webinar on biodiversity and its conservation. I would also like to thank all faculties of the college, all the students present here, participants and technical staff. Thank you, all of you. With the permission of the chairperson of the webinar, I declare here that the session is over. Thank you.